Hello. If you're a doctor working in the UK who is thinking about working abroad, specifically Australia, then the year 2022 likely promises a lot of opportunities and prospects for you. Australian employers and governments are actively campaigning to attract doctors from the United Kingdom. And the UK doctors have preferred access to the Australian job market by virtue of what's called the Competent Authority Pathway Process. Hi there, I'm Dr. Anthony Llewellyn, a real doctor from Down Under, and I've helped hundreds of doctors from other countries pursue their dream of working in medicine in Australia. So in this video, I'm going to go over the following points. Firstly, why 2022 is looking to be a good time for overseas trained doctors to make the move to Australia. Secondly, how the process works, including why doctors from the UK have a preferred status in Australia and what particular specialties are currently most in demand here. So please watch all the way through to the end as I'll be wrapping up with some ways you can get further free information about the process. So why is 2022 looking good? Well, a big reason that the year 2022 is looking good for international medical graduates in Australia and in particular graduates from the United Kingdom is that the years 2020 and 2021 have been particularly lousy. You see, Australia's approach to managing the pandemic, Fortress Australia, has been very successful, but an outcome of turning us into Fortress Australia has meant that there has been very little migration into Australia in the last two years. So while IMG doctors have still been able to get into the country to take up posts, it has been far fewer numbers than in previous years. In fact, in the year 2020, the number of general practitioners who were assessed went down from 192 in the year 2019 to only 52 in the year 2020. We still don't know what happened this year. We still are waiting for the data on 2021. Unsurprisingly, given this situation where the supply of not just medical professionals, but other health professionals from overseas has been significantly restricted over the last two years, we have seen issues in the local doctor workforce with gaps emerging. Governments are under significant pressure now to address these gaps. So as Australia's vaccination program has ramped up and the international borders have begun reopening, you can expect the year 2022 will be a busy period where local hospitals, state governments and recruitment agencies work to fill shortages that have been accumulating for two years. On top of all of this is Australia's reputation as one of the best countries in the world in terms of how doctors are remunerated and well-recognised reputation for excellent infrastructure and services and high living standards. Oh, and did I mention our vaccination rates? So how does the process work and why do you have this preferred status? Well, if you're a trainee doctor from the United Kingdom, then the process for working in Australia is pretty simple. If you're a specialist, then you'll have a few more hurdles to get over, but it's definitely worth it. But before I talk about the process, let's talk about your preferred status. Historically, the United Kingdom has been seen by the governments in Australia as a country with a very similar medical education system, which kind of makes sense as our medical education system basically originated from the UK. So UK doctors, along with doctors from similar countries like Ireland, the US and Canada, have generally always had preferential status here when it comes to getting registered. With the advent of the National Medical Board of Australia in 2010, this approach was solidified into segmenting doctors from those countries, the UK, Ireland, US and Canada, into what's called the competent authority category. What this means is, if you are a doctor from the United Kingdom and you want to gain general registration in Australia, you don't need to sit the AMC examinations, which are the equivalent of the P-Lab in your country. You just need to retain a supervised position for 12 months and apply for registration under the competent authority pathway. If you're a specialist, it's a little bit more complicated as you will have to be reviewed by the relevant specialty college here. But in most cases, if you do have the certificate of specialist training in the UK, the college here will approve you for what's called substantial comparability. After which, again, all you need to do is gain a position that offers you peer review for 12 months and you apply for registration also under the competent authority pathway. But it's not just the colleges and medical board that gives the preferred status out. As I've shown in this other video here, you often see in job descriptions that employers are deliberately looking for doctors from the competent authority countries. 
What particular specialties are in demand in Australia? Well, I'm often asked by international doctors, what are the best specialties or what are the specialties that are most in demand in Australia? And it's actually a fairly complex question to ask as there is generally a need for most specialties and subspecialties in different parts of Australia, particularly the rural parts of Australia. And also demand goes up and down a bit from time to time, but it's not just about demand. It's also about how hard the assessment process is and whether you can actually obtain a supervised position at the end of it. That being said, consistently over several years, I would say that the three best specialties to be in if you're wanting to come to Australia are general practice, especially if you're interested in or are a rural general practitioner, psychiatry, and emergency medicine. Most other specialties have a reasonable level of demand and interest, but towards the bottom in terms of a mixture of both lower demand and just being harder to get into are specialties like most of the surgical specialties, cardiology, anesthetics, ophthalmology, dermatology, and obstetrics and gynecology. That being said, bear in mind that specialists from the UK in these particular specialties still stand a far better chance of migrating than ones from other countries. So if you are a doctor from the United Kingdom, I do hope that you found that information very useful. Now, what I have provided to you is a snapshot of what's involved. I do have complete videos on things like the Competent Authority Pathway and a series on the Specialist Pathway, as well as some courses. But if you would like to know more about the process of working in Australia, or you just want to ask me some questions, the best thing you can do is go to the description of this video where I've put a link in the description to where you can register for some free training where I go into more details about the process, tips, tricks, tactics, and resources, etc. And I'm able to answer your questions. I'd love to see you there. So until next time, bye for now and see you in another video.